News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGBO, AM 1290 and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A tragic plane crash in Missoula took the life of a man connected to one of America's most cherished authors. Good morning, this is John King filling in for Peter Christian, who's on vacation today. Your newscast brought to you by NC Design Studio, specializing in high-end residential architecture and commercial development, online at ncdesignstudio.com. Located at 235 North 1st Street West, just down from the North Side Kettle House. The husband of Alabama author Harper Lee's attorney has been killed in an airplane crash in Missoula. Missoula County Sheriff's Office Public Information Officer Brenda Bassett has details. The Missoula County Coroner was able to make contact with the victim's family of the plane crash, and they identify him as Patrick Carter. Uh, He's 52 years old and from Monroeville, Alabama. We know that he was traveling from Washington State and stopped to fuel up here in Missoula, but he was heading home to Alabama. Carter was a longtime pilot and the husband of Monroeville attorney Tanya Carter, who has represented Lee as her second novel, Go Set a Watchman, became a bestseller this year. A friend of the Carters, Connie Baggett, says that uh, Carter was a brilliant man who will be deeply missed. Pat Carter served on the board that oversees the old Monroe County Courthouse, which served as a set model for the movie version of Lee's beloved novel, To Kill a Mockingbird. The wreckage of Carter's plane has been at the airport since Wednesday and the National Transportation Safety Board investigated yesterday. Investigator Larry Lewis for NTSB explained the research process to reporters. This is a, an old historic airplane. We're in the process of getting our network together to see if we can reach out and pick up all the pieces that we can. And we're going to start here with the photographs and the videos that we have, the witness statements. It's going to be uh, packaged up and taken to a secure facility so that uh, if we have further questions, we can go back and look at it again. Lewis says this crash will be challenging because of the age of the plane and that it could take up to a year to find out what initially caused the crash. Montana Attorney General Tim Fox issued a news release on Thursday afternoon addressing the legality of the proposed expanded background check ordinance from the Missoula City Council. Proponents have claimed that the ordinance would not violate existing state statutes. However, Attorney General Fox disagrees. His statement reads, quote, Contrary to the opinion of the city attorney whom I respect, I believe that Missoula's proposed gun control ordinance is prohibited by state law and likely violates our constitutional right to keep and bear arms. End quote. After numerous requests from various media outlets, the city of Missoula responded yesterday, saying that city attorney Jim Nugent had only issued an opinion on September 15th to give background on related law for the Missoula City Council. The city's response says, quote, The people of Missoula have the constitutional right to petition their local government to consider an issue that relates to public safety. Any further remarks would be speculative, end quote. City Council will debate the issue again next Monday. Prosecutors say a man suspected of robbing a Great Falls bank lived in an apartment across the street and paid his overdue rent with $100 bills. Great Falls Police Public Information Officer Sergeant Wells released the statement Thursday after the capture of Dwayne Audie Jr. First Interstate Bank downtown in Great Falls was robbed yesterday morning and a photo of the suspect was released to the public. As additional evidence was uncovered, search warrants were executed at various locations where evidence of the robbery was discovered. I'm happy to report the majority of the funds stolen from the bank have been recovered. The Great Falls Tribune reported Dwayne Audie Jr. was arrested Wednesday after police received a tip that a man matching the bank robber's description had been dropped off at that apartment building. Sergeant Wells said that many law enforcement agencies were involved in the pursuit of Dottie. Some local schools were locked down and a helicopter was even called in. Charging documents say an armed man walked into the First Interstate Bank Wednesday morning and left with about $1,500 in cash. Bank employees said Audie used to cash his paychecks there. Prosecutors said he had been out of work for about a month. U.S. Border Patrol agents say they've arrested an Afghan military officer who deserted while participating in a training program in the United States. Agent Craig Duff says Mustafa Tanin was arrested Tuesday on a Washington state-bound Amtrak train that had stopped to refuel in Haver, Montana. Duff says Tanin initially told the agents that he was from Mongolia. The Border Patrol says Tanin was attending military training at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas, when he deserted September 29th on a trip to Washington, D.C. 
The Montana Secretary of State's office says the sponsors of three proposed ballot initiatives may begin gathering signatures in an attempt to put them before the voters in the 2016 election. One of the proposed measures would allow adults to buy, possess, and use marijuana. But on the other hand, a second would allow the drug to be banned completely, including for medicinal purposes. The third measure would bar the use of animal traps or snares on public land in the state with very few exceptions. Secretary of State Linda McCullough previously approved for signature gathering a proposed measure that would allow any school employee with a permit to carry a concealed handgun at school. The anti-trapping, anti-marijuana, and gun proposals are statutory initiatives requiring signatures from 24,174 voters. The pro-marijuana measure is a constitutional initiative and will require over 48,000 signatures. Traffic accidents are on the increase in western Montana as wildlife are being struck by vehicles when they cross state and interstate highways. Frenchtown Fire spokesman Mel Holt said his crews have responded to several collisions in just the past few days. Over the last several days, we've responded to two accidents involving animals. Uh, the last one, which was a bull elk crossing the road, a um, semi-truck driver tried to avoid a collision and ended up uh, rolling his truck on the side. Holt said crews were able to remove that semi-truck's windshield to remove the driver from the vehicle safely. Time to listen to some weather from uh, Matt from KECI. Your weather is brought to you by Dig It Excavating, bringing 30 years of excellence to every job, utilities, water mains, septic systems, foundations, storm drains, and more. Give them a call or visit digitmontana.com. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. It should be another beautiful day to get out and enjoy. Chilly to start the morning, but in the 70s by the time we get into the afternoon. Another similar day on Saturday, and be on the lookout for some rain on Sunday. I'm meteorologist Matt Gray for KECI 13, your first alert station. Thanks, Matt. It's currently about 33 degrees outside. Your news talk time is 6.39. We'll be back in just a minute with local news. Actually, regional news <laughs> on the way. As all good things must, as all great things do, that unlimited clearance for 2015 will end soon. But